Okay, so um, now we're going to take a sort of a brief interlude to just introduce the absolute value, um, the concept of absolute value, and list some of the important properties of it. I don't want to get too bogged down in um, details of proofs here or anything, so this should be pretty short, but i uh, got to do it at some point. So uh, actually, it makes sense to do it here because the definition of absolute value relies on the ordering. So technically, this is sort of the earliest place that we can sensibly make this definition. So um, we'll define, so uh, for A in R or Q, again, we're sort of doing a lot of these definitions before we've really defined what R is, but just try to ignore that. Um, so uh, define the absolute value of A by um, the rule if, so A, the absolute value of A is just itself if A is greater than or equal to zero and uh, A equals negative A if A is, let's see, how do they phrase this? I just say less than zero. Oh, they say less than or equal to, okay, it doesn't matter. But um, technically there's like, you do, to verify that this makes sense, you'd have to say like, okay, in the special case that A equals zero, these two definitions are consistent because, but, but whatever, okay, it doesn't matter. So anyway, um, so we defined the absolute value. Uh, they also define this. Um, honestly, I don't remember if they really use this notation much in the book. I doubt I'll really use it a lot, but it's nice to drive a certain point home. Uh, so they define this. <clears throat> right. So when I say R or Q, it's sort of like you can, you're, you can restrict your attention to Q if you want. Obviously Q is a subset of R, so like Defining it for all of R kind of implicitly defines it for Q. But uh, anyway, so um, I think one of the reasons they do this is just to really drive home the point that um, you should intuitively think about absolute values as distances, right? So the absolute value of a single number is the distance from that number to zero. Uh, but more generally, actually, the absolute value of the difference between any two numbers is the distance between them on the number line, okay? Um, so, and I'll kind of illustrate why that's a useful way to think about it in just a sec, actually. So, uh, there's sort of a theorem here, uh, that they list. This is, uh, 3.5, which is sort of basic properties of absolute value. So, properties of absolute value. Um, and so it has three parts. So, uh, First one is that the absolute value is always non-negative. Second part is that, um, I guess they put these in parentheses. Um, that the absolute value factors through products. Uh, and third one is a special one, very famous. Less than or equal to a plus b. This is called the triangle. Oops. Inequality. And it's very important. Okay, uh, we're going to be using that a lot, all the time. Triangle inequality, all day, every day. Um, so the triangle inequality is very fundamental. It's not too hard to understand. I mean, it's not too hard to see why it's true, but it's just very useful. You'll even be using it in the, in the first homework. So um, let, I'm going to just illustrate. I don't want to prove this stuff. Uh, so this one, part two, is just proved with a lot of casework where you basically, there are four cases that basically go through the different possibilities of what the combination of signs could be for A and B. So they could be like both positive, one could be negative, or they could like both be negative and stuff. So they just go through all of those. Um, and 
you can do a similar thing for this. Well, actually, I don't know if they really do cases for this. They do something else. Um, but, oh, yeah, yeah. So they do something else, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to show you a picture uh, to justify why this is true. So, so um, justification of the triangle inequality. Eh. I'll actually just write it out. Um, so just picture this. So we have the number line, right? Here's zero. I'll just draw like three sort of scenarios here, right? So one of them would be that A and B are both on this side. So I'm not going to label them which one is which because I don't know which is. So these are A and B in some order here, right? And then A plus B is over here, right? And uh, well, in this case, right, A equals A, B equals B, and everything's good, right? So this is just, oops, they just kind of add constructively with each other. Um, so, you know, because, yeah, the distance from zero to A is just A. Distance from zero to B is just B, same thing. So, um, and then down here, I'm going to do an, a similar case. This is a reflected, so, and then A plus B is over here. So the, I don't know, one, two, three, right? Then the only kind of weird case is if uh, one of them is on one side and one of them is on the other. And again, I'm not going to label which is which, but um, so, and then like their sum is going to be somewhere in between the two, right? Because uh, like you can imagine if you start from here and then you just add whatever this number is, you're going to land up, land somewhere maybe here or over here or vice versa, if you start from here and add a negative number, you'll just land somewhere here or here. But it's not possible to get outside of these bounds this way. So let's just actually, I'll just label them like A and B. But just remember that you can switch the labels. It doesn't matter. So then this distance, so A plus B is going to be somewhere inside. So I'll just put it here, right? Um, this distance is A. This distance is B. So this total distance between them, right, is A plus absolute value of B. So this is when you add the absolute values. But this little distance here, this is the absolute value of A plus B. Sorry if it's a little hard to see. But uh, it's just the distance from 0 to A plus B, right? So no matter what, A plus B lands somewhere in between in this case, right? And so it has to be closer to 0 than or like it, the, this distance has to be shorter, the distance between zero and A plus B has to be shorter than the total distance uh, from A to B in this case, which is the, actually the sum of their absolute values, right? So anyway, uh, hopefully that makes it clear. If it doesn't, you know, you can find a million other explanations that might be better. <laughs> it's not too hard to understand, hopefully. So uh, yeah, that's it for the absolute value.